What is going on guys, Grave here today. I'd like to talk about update 4.0.0.1, of course, which is the update for the Witch Queen. This is some really long patch notes. I'm gonna link them down in the description below so you guys can read over them in their entirety if you would like. I'm gonna go over the high points. I know a lot of stuff you guys will be interested in. Some of the other stuff is a lot of kind of background fixes, some things you might not be interested in. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. First of all, they talked about uh, strikes and how they're fixing some of the strikes in game to, you know, fix some bugs or issues where players were unable to avoid damage or things were not working correctly. They were getting teleported to wrong areas or not being able to teleport in certain strikes if they've joined it in progress. They also talked about nightfall difficulties. Uh, they said nightfall except Grandmaster now fe feature the acute burn modifier. This burn increases players outgoing damage of the matching element type by 25% and incoming damage from enemies by 50%. All specific uh, strike modifiers like Durance and Bile have been removed. Seasonal modifiers are now used for Hero, Legend, and Master difficulty nightfalls instead of the Vanguard playlist ones. Also, three seasonal modifiers for the Season of the Risen have been added into the game. Also, nightfalls will now display a modifier with a list of shield types for you to or you will encounter while playing on any difficulty within match game. Also, they fixed a few things with some issues within the dungeons and raids. Also, they talked about pinnacle rewards. Sources moved to the Witch Queen raid from the Vault of Glass. Vault of Glass will now be powerful rewards uh, instead of those pinnacles. They did a lot of changes to Gambit. One of the big things, they added freelance to Gambit and also updated Gambit combatant encounter varieties. Also, uh, combatant energy shield resistance increased. They increased the medium blocker from 500 to 1,000, added stasis attack to the large blocker, and bank locked waypoints now display from afar and off screen. When it comes to ammo in Gambit, com combatants no longer drop ammo bricks by chance. Ammo finder mods will still function correctly. Uh, ammo crates now spawn after clearing each uh, front of combatants. Also on death, players now drop half their held moats when defeated. Players can be revived by other players two seconds earlier, but the auto respawn is actually delayed by two seconds. And they added a player respawn points to all fronts in Gambit. Also on the moat phase, uh, invasions now trigger 40 and 80 moat thresholds. Also, they made some changes to the prime evils in the game and made some fixes in game, but just in general with AI and other issues. When it comes to Crucible, they fixed an issue where the Crucible submachinist medal was not being awarded. Also, they fixed an issue where the uh, unflattering glory triumph streak was not properly resetting. Also, for Iron Banner, Sheldon will now display the Iron Banner engram in his rank description tooltip. And when it comes to trials, they added a small amount of trials reputation at the end of every round one. This reputation gained around 50% on average, which should allow trials to, you know, your rank to be able to rank up a little bit quicker. Also, for Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, and Trials double rank weeks, as well as double nightfall loot, are now advertised on the launch screen. Uh, of those various activities. They also made a lot of changes to Lost Sectors. A lot of it was just kind of fixes for Lost Sector, some issues that were in each Lost Sector. The main thing to take away from the Lost Sector changes is Legend and Master Lost Sectors are now on the same Lost uh, Sector each day. So you don't have to go to two different ones. Now you can just go to the flag and choose what difficulty you would like to do it on. Also, on uh, most activities that feature multiple champion types, they now display a single activity modifier and tool tips for those champions has been uh, kind of updated so it gives you more information about each champion type. When it comes to some different things with seasonal challenges, I made some fixes to it. UI text fixes for all platforms, some roster fixes for all platforms. They talked about six new armor mods that have been added to the game. Kinetic Siphon, Harmonic Siphon, and equivalent mod for each of the four damage types. Those can be actually added to mod sockets in your helmet and allow your weapons to generate orbs of power. They also talked about some of the changes to the uh, weapons in general. They fixed some issues with some you know, things that were broken with some of the weapons, no nerfs or buffs, but they did buff a few of the weapons in the game. They increased high impact fusion rifle damage per, bu per bullet from 62 to 64, excuse me, and they increased high impact fusion rifle PVE damage bonus from 15 to 20%. When it comes to breach grenade launchers, they reduce the blinding and concussion grenade damage by 25%, and scale damage by subfamily on rockets, uh, rocket launchers. Uh, precision is by 0.95, high impact by times one, adaptive times 1.05, and aggressive is times 1.05 as well. When it comes to snipers, they reduce the variance and aim assist scaling between low and high zoom, and also the cone 
uh, increased by 25% on low, uh, low zoom and reduced by 9% on high zoom. They increased damage versus minor in PVE by 10% on all pulse rifles. Exotic primary ammo weapons have an increased damage versus minors in PVE by 40%. Same can be said for trace rifles, uh, all trace rifles. And for the chaperone, they reduced the passive range buff from 2 meters to 0 0.5 meters. Uh, they made some other changes to you know, things like uh, the Teraba now reduces the perk progression by half instead of clearing it uh, when the weapon is stowed. And, you know, just a few things on the duality and some other weapons as well. But most of it was just increasing damage or making a few tweaks here and there. Uh, they did make some big changes to the Ager Scepter, which a lot of people consider to be a buff. Some consider to be a nerf. Just depends on kind of how you look at it. I still think it's going to be a very good gun. They fixed the uh, ability to activate or continue using empowered mode on the Ager Scepter. But they rebuilt the perk previously. The perk modified supercharge rate now it freezes supercharge rate and deducts super directly fixing several issues with activities not changing or not really affecting the charge rate and the outliers for a uh, recharge based on the intellect stat also they reduced the catalyst tip fire of the dead man's tail from 150 to 130 the rinse driver now has double the amount of flinch received and the forerunner they increased the ammo picked up from special ammo brick from two to three or four to five with a scavenger mod they adjusted weapons and stats on some older weapons that came to be like legendary uh, weapons in game not all got adjusted but some did also some other things they did was of course uh, with the grenades a vortex grenade now pulls enemies into lingering damage also lingering damage per ticket reduced by 20 percent and the base cooldown increased from 105 to 121 when it comes to void spot grenades, they base uh, cooldown reduced from 105 to 91. Void wall grenades no more consistently expands to its full length over uneven terrain. S uh, suppression grenades now affect uh, effects now last five seconds against player targets down from 10 seconds. They also made some changes, of course, to all of the different subclasses that kind of go in the void class. So they're making changes to shadow shot. Uh, shadow shot mobius quiver and all shadow shot variants the snare bomb and the vanished smoke bomb on the hunter of course the revenant silence and squall is being uh, kind of updated as well when it comes to the titan we have changes to the warden of dawn sentinel shield shield, shield bash and shield toss also you know some changes for the warlock for nova bomb uh, for the pocket singularity handheld supernova all these changes, of course, are kind of in-game because of the Void 3.0. So the changes of going from those different trees you picked to now going to fragments and going into, you know, kind of making it like stasis. They had to make a lot of changes to make everything work correctly and be, you know, within certain point of, of being or allowing players to use all this stuff depending on what fragments and things they have equipped. And that is pretty much it, guys, except for, you know, they talked about fixing you know, bounties and pursuits and, and emblems and shaders and things not working correctly. But a lot of it was platform and system fixes uh, for PC, you know, and consoles. There's some general fixes, some vendor fixes. Of course, Zer now sells the Hawkman and the Dead Man's Tail. Master Raul now offers material exchange, kind of like the Spider. Uh, Banshee and Ada One now offer four mods at a time, increased up from two, so you can buy four mods from them daily. Uh, the Drifter now offers weapons and armor focusing. Sean Hand will no longer offer repeatable bounties. Uh, a new exotic quest, the Queen's Beckon, is available from Sean Hand as well. Akora Ray, they overlooked the Tower Bazaar. Akora will now teach all classes to the Void ability, so the new Void thing will kind of be through Akora. And so that's a lot of the things, you know, that were within this uh, kind of update in general, besides them adding all of the new stuff. I know that's what a lot of people are looking forward to, but I kind of want to give you guys just a general overview of those patch notes. Like I said, they are very, very long. So if you want to go in and read everything for yourself, like I said, they will be linked down in the description below. But leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.